Turn me up a little bit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the meat stall. And today I'm excited because we're going to be doing one of the granddaddy uh, of the cooks, which is the prime rib. Yeah, yeah. The other one being the brisket in my book. I think a lot of people are fearful of doing a prime rib or what's typically uh, called a standard rib roast is because of the price. And they don't want to mess up this piece of meat. But if you take your time and just follow a few simple steps, cooking this is super simple. Uh, so it's a cut of beef from uh, the primal rib it's one of the nine primal cuts of beef. Now this whole entire section, if I would have to have a whole section of prime rib, it'll probably be from rib bone six to 12. That's typically a whole prime rib. Here I got, this is a three bone, and I think it typically weighs about nine pounds. But you can have anywhere from two bones up to seven bones throughout the prime rib. I'm cooking this for a customer, they didn't want a whole uh, primal, so I just got them four bones, which would be enough. And the reason why they call it a standing rib roast because these bones here. Yeah. trimmed up a little bit. Next I'm gonna go right here with the bones and I'm gonna cut the bones almost away. Now we're not gonna cut these all the way off. We're gonna leave it right here. I think I'm gonna do it just like that. I'm just gonna leave it just like here with this flat. You can get seasoning in here, which I plan to do. And then I'm gonna tie it back. And then when it's time for the customer to eat, they can just take this right here and then cut it all the way off. And they got a little set of ribs. Yeah. You see, it's a nice good amount of meat on these ribs here. Let's talk about these uh, beef ribs right quick. You ever notice when you go to the butcher, well not the butcher, but you go to the store and you get beef ribs they seem kind of skimpy because what the butcher does is similar to what I did they try to get as much meat for the ribeye and leave less for the ribs unless you get them specifically cut ribs is like a byproduct of butchery but they still sell them. but it's open just like that I can maybe put my salt in there and salt it down and then tie it up This is no more than just kosher salt. And I'm gonna salt it, salt it kind of liberally because it's a big piece of meat and it can take it. And we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. I like to go 24 hours, but through time constraints, I only have 12 hours to do this. like to do is when I'm tying these up I'm gonna tie this on the other side of this bone I go here and I go once then I go around twice let's go around three times we go around three times and once you pull it It cinches down on itself. 
cut off the excess. And there you go. You got your rib roast all tied and ready for your cooker. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and I'm gonna let it go uncover in the refrigerator and let this dry brine take place. First, let me get some of this salt on. I eat. don't wanna waste none of that. Put this in the refrigerator and let it go. And I'll see you guys at six in the morning when I go in with the herb crust. All right, we are here at the Trigger Tailgater. Turn this on to the smoke setting. We're gonna roll about two hours of smoke on it, and then we're gonna come back out, and then we're gonna crank it up to about 275. With my thermal pin, I read about 115. I did something that's a little different. Uh, when I put it on this morning at about four in the morning. I put it on the smoke setting and I let it go on smoke setting. Right now it's probably about 10 o'clock. So it's been on smoke setting for about five hours. I just let it come up real slow. Um, it's pretty much resting right here at 115. It's not going coming up anymore. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off and then I'm going to crank the trigger up to 375. Then I'm going to put it back on to see if I can get it to crust up. I got the trigger set to, to high. 380, 390 on the trigger tailgater. I think that's about how it's just going to go for uh, this particular model. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it back on there, still get that probe back in there, and then uh, let it come up these uh, last few degrees. I really should have took that probe out because she's gonna be hot. All right, she's been on 380, probably about 15, 20 minutes. Oh yeah, she looking good. She's sizzling. See if I can zoom you guys in on it. Oh yeah, that's looking amazing right there. That's right where I wanna be, 124, 125. So what I'm gonna do now, it got excellent color on it. It looks beautiful. I hate that I'm not going to be able to cut it for you because it's for a customer. So basically I'm just going to take it inside the house, I'm going to wrap it in aluminum foil, and, uh, and I'm going to give it to them. Find you some meat and smoke it. Okay. Turn me up a little bit.